Hello my friends, Amy Esther here, and today we are talking all about small intestine bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You definitely don't want to miss any of my videos about life with chronic illness. Today we are talking about SIBO and I do have several videos about SIBO. I also have several other chronic illnesses and from what I've learned about SIBO, a lot of people with SIBO also have other chronic illnesses, other things going on in their bodies that are not right. So if you are interested in how to be happy and joyful and just be able to do this life while living with chronic illness, you're in the right place and you're gonna wanna subscribe to my channel. But today we're just gonna talk about SIBO, which is a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So I assume if you clicked on this video, you either have SIBO or maybe you think you have SIBO or you know someone with SIBO and you wanna learn more about it. Or I don't know, maybe you just like me and you wanna watch all of my videos, that's cool too. <laughs> but let's start with what exactly SIBO is. So SIBO stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And that name can kind of get confusing because if you have SIBO, you don't necessarily have a bacterial overgrowth, but that's what they originally thought when they named it is that your small intestine is just overgrowing bacteria and it can cause lots and lots of problems. So the way this can happen is a lot of different ways. I, my personally, I had a virus, I got food poisoning and it just kind of threw everything off and I think the things in there, whatever it was, the bacteria or other stuff was overgrowing and caused a lot of issues. Um, I've also heard people getting it, you know, after pregnancy or after some big life event, whether it just be a stressful thing that happened after a divorce or uh, a death in the family, something really big that happened. I've heard of SIBO starting there um, and often I do hear after a virus. So those are some of the reasons it could start. Um, if you have something different, I would love to hear in the comments below. Let me know what caused your SIBO to start or did it just start out of nowhere because I've heard of that happening as well. So let's talk about the two types of SIBO. So there are two types and one of them is definitely a bacteria, which is hydrogen dominant. So that one is an overgrowth of bacteria, so it's a lot easier to treat. You can probably guess before you even fin finish this video how you treat an overgrowth of bacteria, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So the second type is methane dominant, and it is not actually bacteria, fun fact. It is actually something called archaea. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'll put it right here so you can see it. Um, and I learned this at a conference for one of my other chronic illnesses that um, frequently goes along with SIBO, which is POTS. I was at a POTS conference and they had a whole section on SIBO and that kind of blew my mind, but it totally made sense because I had been treating my SIBO as if it was bacteria and it never worked and nothing that I tried was working. So that was actually really helpful to me to know it wasn't a bacteria. The other type, I mean, I said there are two types, technically there's sort of a third type, which is that you have a combination of both. So some people have, you know, a medium high hydrogen, a really high methane or vice versa, or they're both really high or whatever. You can have a combination of the two. Personally for me, I have methane dominant, of course, harder to treat. That's what I was given as my gift. <laughs> um, but I have methane dominant. My hydrogen did not increase at all when I was tested for it. So I definitely only have the methane, but some people can have a combination of both. Okay, so symptoms of SIBO. So these are pretty similar. Some of my other chronic illnesses that I talk about, they're kind of all over the place with symptoms, but the ones, the SIBO symptoms, they're pretty similar. So one is definitely bloating. like. I promise you will have bloating if you have SIBO. I'm actually pregnant right now as I'm making this video, but I'm not far enough along that I should look pregnant yet. I'm only 10 weeks. However, I look pregnant all the time because of my SIBO. So yeah, I always look pregnant and I don't know. I just live with it. Other things, um, gas, diarrhea, and constipation. For me, I flip between the two. Some people have mostly just diarrhea. Some people mostly have constipation. Some people like me go back and forth. Um, abdominal pain, so this can be pain anywhere in the abdomen. Typically though, it's after eating um, on the upper left side of your body. You can also have pain on the right side, but that's your gallbladder. 
Um, the reason that I would say you can't have that with SIBO is just because sometimes gallbladder issues come because of SIBO. So that's possible as well. But typically like the SIBO pain is on the left side. Um, and then of course pain all through the digestive system as the food moves along because your body hates you if you have SIBO. At least that's my opinion. Um, nausea, fatigue, and then extreme burping. So my burping when I first got SIBO was so bad. Um, it's gotten better over the years as I've learned to kind of control my SIBO, but yeah. Burping can be bad, nausea, fatigue, all of that stuff can go along with SIBO. If you have a different symptom, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Again, so curious what is going on for you guys. Okay, those are the symptoms. Let's talk about how to get diagnosed. So the diagnosis for this is pretty straightforward. It's called a lactu lactulose. I don't know if you guys, I'm not a doctor. I should say that I'm not a doctor. I'm just a woman with SIBO who is sharing my story. So anything I say, take it to your doctor, talk to them about it. All the terminology I say, I'm probably not pronouncing it right. I was a math teacher before I got really sick and I'm a math tutor, so I do the numbers. I don't really do the spelling and the pronouncing, so probably gonna pronounce everything wrong. Anyway, a lactulose breath test, something like that. Um, and what you do is you go in and they test your breath. You just breathe into this little tube. Um, they test your levels, your starting baseline levels, and then they give you a sugar drink and then they test your levels again after you drink that sugar drink and they do that again for three hours so they do it every like half hour for three hours so my one thing i would say as advice if you go to get this test is for me mine increased so quickly that they knew right away you have SIBO um, and so i did one breath test so two breath tests the initial baseline and then the next one and it was already extremely high so they said, okay, you have SIBO, here's the treatment, blah, 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 move me along. Treatment didn't work, long story short. Got retested multiple times as I tried treating it, nothing ever worked. Um, finally, I went to a different doctor and they tested me the entire three hours, even though my baseline was already high or my first one was already high. And they this time told me it was methane and the other times they didn't tell me there were two types. I don't know if they didn't know or they just didn't tell me, but um, they tested me the whole time so I could see how it increased, when it dipped, if it ever did dip. It was just so much more helpful. So my one advice is to get the entire test. Even if you test positive at the beginning, they're gonna be like, oh, you have it, you're done. Say, no, I want the whole test and I want all the results. I wanna know what type I have because all of that is super important when it comes to treating your SIBO. So I made that mistake the first few times I got tested and I really wish from the beginning I would have just stick through the whole three hours, not let them stop me and figured out what type I had. And now treatment, which is really tricky. I have a video here on my channel called seven SIBO treatments that I tried. I'll link it down below. Those are things that I tried. Other people told me they worked for them. Unfortunately, most of them didn't really work for me or if they did, it wasn't significant enough for me to call it, you know, a full treatment that worked for me, but they could work for you because they have helped other people. Um, so I'll probably go over some of those here, but if you want more information in detail of the ones that I tried, um, definitely head over to that video. But there are some stuff you can try. And again, it depends on what type you have, hydrogen or methane. So you can try herbals. Um, and I would go to some sort of holistic doctor who has dealt with SIBO before and knows the two different types. Because I went to one and I thought he was gonna be really helpful. But again, we didn't know that I had methane dominant. And so he treated me as if it was a bacteria overgrowth, not archaea. And so it didn't actually work. Um, and so I wish that I would have known the type and gone to a doctor that had dealt with both types. So if you do herbals, make sure they know both types of SIBO. And then you can also do, of course, antibiotics. So there's one called Rifax, Rifaxin, Rifaxmin. Don't know how to say it again, but something like that. Um, so you could take that um, if you have hydrogen, if you have methane, they will try you on Rifaxin plus Neomycin, which I tried and it did not work for me. Um, and then one that a lot of you have recommended on my other videos about SIBO is called uh, A-T-A-N-T-I-L. And at, I'm not gonna try to say it, I'm gonna say it wrong. Anyways, a lot of you recommended trying that. Um, so that's something I might try later. I'm pregnant, like I said, um, and I've kind of been pregnant or nursing um, for the past couple years. And so I wanna, 
wait till I'm totally done with that. I don't want to try anything while I am nursing and pregnant. So anyway, I haven't tried that yet, but that's something to try. My one advice if you do antibiotics is to just know that it might not totally work. Um, mine <laughs> never worked. Uh, or it might work and then it might come back later and then you have to take another antibiotic and you keep doing that cycle over and over again and your body rejects it later. Anyway, it can be a whole thing. Um, SIBO can be chronic, like I have where it just never goes away. You just can't seem to treat it. Um, it maybe goes up and down like little hills, but it never totally goes away. And then it can also just go away and come back. Um, so both of those are totally possible with SIBO and it sucks. And most people that I have talked to have not been able to cure SIBO. It either recurrently comes back or just is always kind of there. So it's not super fun, but I'm assuming if you're watching this, you probably already know that. A few other treatments you can try um, are diet. So the low FODMAP diet is pretty common with SIBO. It takes out highly fermentable foods. That I would say helps symptoms, but it doesn't help like cure SIBO. It didn't, it didn't fix my SIBO. It was a temporary fix, but as soon as I ate those foods again, symptoms were back. And to me, it never took my symptoms all away. It maybe helped a little bit, decreased a little bloating, but it really didn't help that much for me. But a lot of people um, do try the low FODMAP. I definitely think that low carb, something like paleo or keto diet is really helpful if you have SIBO. Um, those types of diets, I think, are the most helpful because they're the most realistic. You can do them more long term, but they still help the symptoms a lot. So that's my recommendation. And if you're watching this to get the cure, I don't have it. I'm sorry. And I made a few videos here about SIBO. My most popular video on my channel is my SIBO story. It was one of my first ones, and to be honest, it's not my best work, but it's my most popular, so I know there's a lot of you out there that have SIBO, and I really wish that I could give you a magic cure. I don't have it. If you have it, leave it in the comments below. We'd love to hear it. Um, but I have tried quite a few things, and so far, I haven't found anything that totally worked. However, you can totally manage it. It is definitely manageable with the diet. I would also say exercise helps because it gets kind of that food moving through your system, um, eating small meals. There's little things like that you can do that will just decrease your symptoms, make it easier to manage, and we will get through this together. We might live with this forever. We will see, but we'll get through it and I'm here with you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos so that you know that you're not alone through this journey. And I will see you on my next one.